Today, we're going to talk about Jetstream. Jetstream is a throughput and memory optimized engine for large language model inference on accelerator devices like TPUs and GPUs. Hello, and welcome to Container Bytes. I'm Mofi. I'm Ali. And let's get to it. We have published a number of guides showcasing how to serve Gemma on GKE using both GPUs and TPUs and a number of open source inference engines. The links to the guide we'll be following in this video will be in the description below. You can get access to the Gemma model in Kaggle. For our GK cluster to access the Gemma model, we'll download the Kaggle secret from Kaggle settings by going to settings and creating a new API token. We have downloaded a token and uploaded that into our CloudShell environment. To get started, we've already created a GK autopilot cluster. Next step is uploading that Kaggle secret into that cluster so our deployment can access Kaggle to pull down the model. So we're going to say Kube control create secret. The next steps are going to cover creating some IAM service accounts and roles so that our deployment is able to access Google Cloud Storage via workload identity. This is required so that as you pull down checkpoints from Kaggle, you convert them into whatever format you need to serve you need a place to upload those bits. Uh, and those bits can go into Google Cloud Storage. For this job, we request eight TPU v5 chips. Because it's an autopilot cluster, we do not have to create the node pools ourselves. We just define a node selector and the type of resource we want. And GK Autopilot will take care of creating the node pools on our behalf. We create the job with kube control apply dash f job 7b.yaml and our job data loader 7b has been created. After some time, we'll see that our job is currently running. We can see the log from the job by running kube control logs name of the job, in this case data loader 7b. We can see that the Gemma model is being downloaded from Kaggle. After some time, we will see that our job has completed. Now that the job is complete, we're going to go ahead and set up serving for Gemma. Let's start with setting up a deployment for Max Engine Server and two replicas, which goes ahead and spins up Max Text, a reference LLM implementation, which uses in this case Jetstream. You'll notice that the load parameters path points to the final unscanned checkpoints, which resulted from the loading job that we just ran. Each replica in this deployment uses eight TPU chips. Each replica of this pod also contains an HTTP server called Jetstream HTTP. Note that this is just a reference HTTP implementation and that Jetstream also has a gRPC endpoint that you can consume directly. Lastly, we have a service that exposes the deployment. We're gonna go ahead and apply this deployment saying kubectl apply. And we can see the containers being created now. We can wait for the Jetstream HTTP container to be ready before we can start serving requests. We can check the logs. We can see that our UVCorn server is running on port 8000. We'll set up a port forward to the Jetstream HTTP service to talk to the container underneath. We're going to verify our access to the HTTP server by running the following query via curl. We can see that our server responds for the question, what are the top five programming languages? It comes back with Python. R, SQL, Java, and Scala. To consume our Gemma deployment, we can also deploy an interactive chat interface like radio. We can go ahead and say kube control apply. To see if radio is ready, we can say kube control get pods. As we can see, radio is running. We can now go ahead and port forward to the cluster IP exposing this application. Next, we can open up a Cloud Shell web preview we can now chat with Gemma interactively using Gradio. So let's go ahead and ask it a question. And as we can see, Gemma can respond to us. In this video, we saw how to serve a large language model using Jetstream and Maxtext. Links to follow along in your own project will be in the description below.